But as I was trying to allude to earlier, I believe this is a good time to go ahead and swap into our lab world and check out the things that I have been working on. All right, so first things first, you might notice something new in the air, and I'll be getting to that later. That's really just a way for me to restock the Pez dispenser with where I was working up top. And you'll probably notice this track goes up instead of around like it used to. First things I wanted to sh talk about were, I don't know how clear I made it before when I was talking about how we used to do the minecart boosters, was you would have the little dip here and the loop around. Well, this is specifically what I meant, because the way this works is the track comes up, it circles back around, and then falls back on itself, and continues on in that kind of loop forever and ever. And I thought that might work, and I actually did give it a shot, but I realized that there was absolutely no reason to keep the minecart in motion until you were ready for it. And you'll also notice I tore out all the other tracks here, as I ended up figuring out that I didn't actually need both loops. And I did want to give a big thanks right now to Rick Sharp, who actually put a video response, sent me a video response on episode 106 for, I believe he was trying to show me an RS Norlatch. This is a wild guess. I'm terrible at redstone gates. As a way to find a way to use two disparate input signals to cause... Uh, brain stopped. <laughs> to cause a signal to be stored. But unfortunately, by the time I'd put up 106, I'd already spent some time working with this. And I think I managed to find a nice compact design. Um, again, I still thank you very much, Rick. That was really awesome. That Actually, the first time anyone has actually posted a video response trying to help me out. So congratulations on being the first. And again, thank you. Now, let me go ahead and turn around and show you. This is my new compact design, and it uses the fewest amount of booster tracks as I could make physically possible. And if you can see here, it uses exactly one crafted stack of powered rails. So six gold gives you six powered rails, and that gives you this new booster system. And it's... Again, I was trying to make it compact and cheap, so because I'm, I'm using fewer booster rails, I think using one here may have helped a bit, but it is a little slow because of that, but it still works, and I'm pretty happy with it. So if we try it out, you will see... I'm wondering if I should reconnect this. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, quick enough fix. Just wanted to... Of course it's turning to nighttime. That's fine, I've got plenty of torches. Just wanted to be able to show you guys that the thing does work nicely without having to go chase the cart all the way up there. So, we are now using this much smaller track, and instead of having to keep this one always in motion, and then switching a track to send it onto the other loop, we are now using the one loop, and the booster cart, as I'm going to be calling it, since that's basically what it's doing, stays put here until we give a signal to this block, which ends up powering the booster underneath. And the fact that you can send a signal through a solid object, I I decided to stop questioning how redstone works in this game a long time ago, so... Um, actually, let me go ahead and take a quick nap so we can get the nice bright sunlight. So I don't have to do so much editing later on. Makes it easier on me. All right, and I'm turned around again. All right. Okay, so the way this works, let's go ahead and give it a switch. Track heads off, boosts it up, comes back in. It is really slow, like I said, but if we watch, it did make it all the way around. And if we wanted to, I think we'd go ahead and pull this trick again. And just turn the system on. It's not as fast as it was before when I had it going through the double loop. 
as the reset motion is quite slow. But I think it, again, this is really a, since this is a single player world, there's not a whole lot of need for rapid dispense, dispensing of my Pez. So I think this works out pretty well. And what's great about this is it takes advantage of the fact that whatever direction a minecart is going when it hits a powered rail, that's the direction it's boosted in. So when it starts out, it goes this way, and then we've got this piece here going up as a ramp, so when it comes back down, it's now traveling back the other way, and it resets itself perfectly every time, as far as I can tell. Unless I'm inadvertently taking advantage of some sort of southwest rule here, in which case I might have headaches when I try to implement this in the actual LP world. Now, let me go ahead and put this back the way it was real quick, and I'll rejoin you guys in a second. Okay, so, got this set back up. Let's go ahead and head up and around. I guess I can show you first me experimenting with how to send signals up and down. This is the easiest way to send a signal upwards, just do a bunch of stuff like this. As you can see right here, this torch is off because it's receiving power, but if we head down here, turn off the signal, the torch is now on, which is a nice, quick, fun way that I'm sure everyone knows about, and I've just wasted minutes of your life showing you this. Uh, that's the easy way to go up. Going down is a little more tricky. This was the first obvious one to me, and that's just spiral down but I don't like the fact that this thing is 3x3. Three three. It's a little too big for me. Not compact enough. It does function. Um, you've got the lever up here that powers the redstone here, which then go, it runs all the way down, and I just had a powered rail here as my, I guess, signal device to let me know that the power actually got all the way down here. As I mentioned earlier, I did have to go to the Minecraft wiki to find out what the compact version was, and it is this. It's the same up top, you've got the lever with the block, with the redstone on that block. And then you use redstone to keep it a little more compact in a 2 by one Which I like. But, wasting time on that, I think. So, let us head on up. Alright, so, first things first, like I said, this is just the reset for the Pez Dispenser. I believe I mentioned earlier that I sent out some of my sketches on Twitter for what I wanted to do with the minecart station. One of the first things I wanted to test out was, or figure out I guess, was how to make a minecart switching system work because I'm going to want to have our rails be able to say this one sends off to the cave base, or at least to the house. We'll have another switch over at the mini base, or the mini station, to figure out whether we're stopping at the house or going to the cave base, and that's over there, my experimenting with that. This one would go probably to wherever we're going to move. I'm hoping there's time for that. And this third one can go wherever else we need to take it. Maybe it'll go to somewhere we've explored before. Maybe that awesome overhang we saw near the end of Chapter 5. Or I guess maybe the middle. Anyway, the way I've got it set up now is that by default, if you have... Okay, I've got some spare cards. Well, actually, before I get ahead of myself... We've got our switching mechanism here, or at least we've got our tracks, but how do we do the switching? Well, I spent some time and cleaned it up a bit, and I've now got these. If these are all off, even though they're up, I didn't feel like inverting anything. I just did very plain redstone to a torch with a repeater every now and then, just to help do the redstone voodoo that you have to do in this game. So, this is if we wanted to go down track 1, track 2, and track 3. 
as you can see. The way all this ends up working is by taking advantage of some of the glitches with... Oh, the black sheep look weird out of the corner of my eye. It takes advantage of the fact that when a minecart runs across a curb track, there is a priority of whether it will continue this way or this way. And so as I said right now, the default state, if you don't have any of the specific tracks selected, is to go through the entire thing and reset itself into the Pez dispenser. And I love that part. Because I've actually got a gap here, because I didn't feel like taking it all the way down. So it just jumps off, hits this booster, and continues on. Now, if we wanted to, say, head off to the house, we'd flip this one, hop in our cart, and away we go. And that pretty much works the exact same for each of these. The only reason I have these powered rails here is that I find that you tend to slow down a lot when you hit a curve. So this is to help offset that. So I don't know how much better this can be made. I originally wanted to have the three levers right next to each other, but I was having a hard time figuring out how to keep the red wire signals from getting crossed, where when I would turn on one, it would turn on all three accidentally because, well, the wire was all right here. Now, the way this is working, if you guys are curious, it's just very simple. I've got the repeater here powering the grass block. Can I take this one? Okay. Which hits this torch. And this torch is determining how this is curved all the time. I've decided to do sort of the inverse, so that way when the torch is on, we've got the continuing motion straight ahead. And when we flip the switch, the torch goes off, so an off torch ends up meaning we want this track. And so earlier the way I was doing this is I've got this track wired right up to here, and I've got this track wired kind of going around into the middle, and I actually have the other one going even further out and down into this one. So this, I'm happy with this. I think it could be done better. So if you guys have any suggestions on how to actually do this better, that would be great. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that's about all. I'm, I'm pretty sure this could be made more compact and more efficient or effective or something. Maybe taking advantage of some sort of fancy logic gate. But as I said earlier, this is strictly nothing but your basic redstone wire, redstone torch, input source, and some repeaters as necessary. No logic gates whatsoever. So I don't know if that would help make any of this better. So, as I was mentioning earlier, when we do end up taking track one, as I'm going to be calling it for the purposes of this video anyway, back towards the house, and we want to determine whether or not do we want to stop at the mini station, or do we want to continue on to the cave base? I came up with a couple of ideas. My first one didn't quite work out. The original idea, as it was, was I was going to have a piston under this grass block, or at least it's a grass block in my testing here, and the piston had a piece of cobblestone on it, and the cobblestone had a track on it. So what I was going to do is have a lever or a button or something hooked up, and when pressed, actually I think it was a lever, the piston comes up, and the track stops, hits right into the cobblestone, and you're not able to proceed further, and that would be your stopping point. Well, turns out... One second. As I was saying, turns out that when you power a piston and try to get the block to cut off the track, a funny thing happens the track doesn't cut itself off. It actually does this, which is kind of cool, but not what I wanted. And also, unfortunately, when you put the piston down, everything breaks. So this is definitely not a solution that will work at all. So 
given that, spent a little time thinking about it, and I thought maybe I could do the curve track thing again. And the way this one works, the way it's sort of along the lines of what I was thinking in my sketch, because in my sketch I had a picture of a bunch of levers on the wall, and the way this is supposed to work is pretend that we're coming through the tunnel, we're coming through the tunnel, we're getting really close to the mini station. Well, there's going to be a whole bunch of levers on the wall, and I'm just going to start clicking madly as we're going down if I wanted to actually continue on to the cave base. And it would be that any lever you hit would cause the piston to go down, so that way we could continue onwards. But, as you saw, that does not work. So, what I've done instead is go with the curve track trick and switch it to a bunch of buttons, and there's actually a repeater down here set on full four delay. So that way, as we're coming down the track, hopefully I can get this it's hit or miss half the time. Nope. <laughs> kind of missed that one. All right. Let's try this again. You see, if you actually end up hitting the button correctly, thanks to the delay I put on the repeater, the track switch is late, I can show you. Which gives me enough time to travel down and hit the switch as the track has as the track has curved. And using the curve trick that we did over there for the switcher, I end up being able to travel all the way through here. And the only reason I've got the powered rail so at either end is so I could reset the thing easily in case I keep missing like you guys just saw. But I'm not too crazy about this system. It's not as effective. or It's, it's hard to be able to hit the buttons. They're small, and sometimes you're going by fast, and you end up hitting between the buttons, so you end up getting nothing out of that. Uh, the way this works is also quite simple. Uh, I've got the buttons on all these blocks, which when you press it, it powers this block, sends the signal down to redstone, which I've got just traveling all the way down here, and then we've got some stair-stepping to the torch underneath this track, which does the switching exactly the same as we did up here. Now, this is not a terrible method. It does work. It's just hard to get working every time. So, I decided to work on something else. Uh, this you can ignore. This is... Well... Something occurred to me as I was thinking out how to actually set up the station under Resurrection Station. How exactly am I going to do the call, the cart calling, and then actually be able to get out? Because thanks to the requirements of mine tracks, or mine carts, on powered rail, you need to either be moving, you need to be in motion, and then you get powered along that direction, or you need to have a solid object behind you, which tells the game that, well, you obviously can't go this way, so let's go the other way. And let me go ahead and show you. Uh, this is another bit where I was trying to figure out how to send a signal downwards. This is funky, but it works. So, let's go ahead and call a cart. As you can see, it works great. Now, you see the problem? There's no track here. But there's a reason for that, because I could have put it here and, well, let's go ahead and do that for now, and we'll show you how this works. It's going to stop right here on the unpowered rail, like it's supposed to, as this is now acts as a brake. But, if we were to get in this and press the button, nothing would happen. The rail would come on, but because we're not in motion, and there's no block back here, just a rail, we're just going to sit like this and be like, hmm fun. So, because of that, I played around with things, and I got something that I'm pretty happy with. Let's go ahead and call another cart. Actually, before we do that, and before I show you what I'm happy with, 
let me talk about the other thing I was thinking about. It still involves a piston, and it still involves a block. Because, as you can see, there's a gap here. And so again, once, or once again, pretend we are coming down the tunnel. I've only got one lever for now, but I'm thinking I'm going to do a series of levers, which... I don't know, it's probably going to be equally a pain to hit as the buttons, but we'll see. Maybe you guys will have some really cool ideas that will make this easier for me. Because... I'm fresh out. So, we're coming along through the tunnel, and... Well, we don't actually want to stop. We want to keep going all the way through to the cave base. Well, in that case... We do nothing. We leave the system, just like it looks. But, if we do want to stop off at the house, and... Not continue any further than the mini base, the mini station... We set ourselves up a stop. Now, as you guys, I'm sure, are aware, thanks to there being no powered rail here, you will come to a complete stop. But you might be asking yourself, Nocturne, there's no connection here. How do you plan on getting the cart to continue? Well, I'm glad you asked. Through a little bit of trial and error, much experimentation, I found that if you have exactly seven powered rails, all in line, that's just enough to make this gap. And it works roughly 99% of the time. Don't know why the other 1% doesn't work so well. But it works well enough for me that I think this is kind of what I'm going to go with, unless you guys have, again, other ideas. This is just me clumsily fuddling through the redstone voodoo. But this, as I said, is the solution I'm happy with now. And now I think it's time we figured out how this works and why there's a gap here as well. So, let's go ahead and call a cart. Takes a little while because it's kind of far away. And as you can see, I'm not entirely sure why this one skips the gap, maybe because it's empty, which doesn't make any sense because empty carts are supposed to go slower. I'm thinking maybe it has something to do with the fact that it was curved through here, so it got a tiny bit of speed boost, and then the two boosters here got it all the way across. Whatever the reason, I don't care. I'm happy with it. But let's go ahead and give this a shot. And as you can see, we made it across. There's a little bit of hiccup as it drops off and then picks back up, but thanks to this being on all the time, we're able to continue onwards, so we would actually be able to continue all the way back to the cave base and the portal. But how did I do this part? Well, I'm sure the astute among you heard the telltale sound of a piston. This, as I said, is something I completely came up with on my own. This has probably been invented uh, dozens of times by other people. But, like I said earlier, pretty happy with the fact that I was able to work a lot of this out on my own without looking at any videos, because I know when I first said I wanted to do the station, I asked you guys for some pointers to where to go find some new interesting tutorials on how to do minecart stations, that we've got boosters, and the fact that carts don't interact with each other to cause a speed boost like we used to. Love having a round. But... After thinking about it for a while and thinking on how I would want to do this, I decided that, you know what, I think I might want to try and figure this out myself. So, how does this work? Well, let's call another cart. Give it a second. Alright, cart is here. And, if we hop in... Hey, that's weird. What was that? It was this. What's great about this system here is that there's nothing special to it. It's just a button here which powers this, uh, which sends the signal through to a repeater here, which is set on just the default one delay. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but that right there is a piston. The piston you heard earlier. I just did this to make it easier to get in and out. 
So, when we hit this button, thanks to... I guess the fact that I... I you know, I just realized. Using that repeater may have been... a bit of, I don't know, serendipity. Happy coincidence. That thanks to the tiny delay that the repeater adds, the block stays up just long enough that it helps us complete the rule required or fulfill the requirements that powered rails now have in this game. Rail comes on thanks to the button's proximity to the rail and powers the piston, which gives us the block that the minecart wants to be powered off of. And that is how I got all that working. And I guess to show you guys again, since I think when I showed you earlier it was a bit shaky because my mouse got bumped, things getting reset in the Pez dispenser. So if we hurry, go ahead and watch right there above my cursor. That's where the drop-off is. I love that part. And I guess we don't have to show this system. I can just go ahead and reset them from here. love that jump. And if you guys want to know what it's like to actually be in the cart when that happens, let's find out. Woo! Here we go. Whee! Lots of fun. You can stay in the cart, but unfortunately Notch decided to fix the... Actually, I don't know if it was a fix or if it was just a... He never really intended it to end up like that. But it used to be that you would take zero fall damage no matter the distance you fell in either a minecart or a boat. But like I said, that's out of the game now. So if you were to stay in the cart, you'd take the four block fall damage here. And when you tried to get out, you'd fall through all the carts and that'd be even more painful. Oh, uh, something as kind of an aside, the chicken reminded me. Chickens get to violate that rule. Thanks to the fact that when they fall, they do their little floating trick. They just flap their wings, and they take zero fall damage no matter the height they fall from. So, as I said, they get to violate the minecart no damage damages you rule thing, because apparently they do the flying thing, and that slows their descent even in the minecart. So, like I said, kind of funny. Ah, uh, and. Like I told you guys earlier, the 99% of the time that thing works. The other 1% was every time I tried to test it from down here. And I missed one second. Alright, let's try that again. Okay, so, you see, we get brought up to here. We're on the, the power rail. And if we go ahead and give this a press, we get sent on our way. But for whatever reason, when you're in the cart, and it's brought up like this, you're maybe not quite on this enough that I've never once been able to make this gap. But if we go ahead and set this up ourselves, works fine. So I'm not really sure what the difference is there. So, hope you guys found this interesting and not too terribly boring. A lot of talking. And probably the very first, actually, this is the very first episode you have ever had with me talking redstone and actually having half a clue of what I'm talking about. <laughs> but again, I need a lot of help with this, and I think what I'm going to do is when I finish recording tonight, as I'm not done, I'm not going to leave off with just all this talking. But when I am done, I'm going to kind of put the Minecraft LP on hold for a bit. Um, not releasing the episodes, just me sitting down to record more. So you guys might go a little while without some Minecraft, because I really want to have time for getting everyone's input and getting all your suggestions and tutorial suggestions. And, and by tutorial suggestions, I mean you guys making me a video to be like, Nocturne, you retard. 
this is how you make it. Why are you f***ing around with a piston? You moron. <laughs> but again, maybe not quite so angry and mean. <laughs> it says, I really would like to have your help with this, and I know the title of the show has changed, but I still think you guys being able to choose and help me out along the way is still really important and a lot of fun. And I think choice is still really an important part of all this, that I want to be able to make sure I keep you guys involved whenever possible, even though this is now turned into more of the standard whatever I want goes LP. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, well, not really moving on. I guess I should finish what I was saying first. You guys are probably freaking out. What do you mean, put the Minecraft LP on hold? Are you mad? I'm gonna unsubscribe, you asshole! Um, again? Not so angry. Relax. It's okay, guys. Because I've actually been working on another LP. So you will not be without videos. You'll just be without Minecraft for a little while. And I'm not going to tell you what I've been working on. You'll have to have it as a surprise. But I really hope you guys enjoy it, as it's a game that I've been wanting to play for a little while. And I'm glad I was finally able to sit down and start playing it. Now, unfortunately, it's not as easy of a game to sound balance and sync the audio, as I still record my mic audio separately from my video. So when you guys do see it, it's going to be a little off in places. You're going to hear a little bit of echoing, especially during the cutscenes. And yes, this is a game with cutscenes. So I hope you guys forgive me for, th forgive me for that. I'm going to be playing further with the audio settings when I sit down to do more recording of that later. And hopefully the second set will be better. There were two hours in the first set, so there'll be quite a bit there. So hopefully you guys will be understanding and all that. Now, since we have been doing an ass load of talking in this episode, I think it's about time we could... We actually sat down and did something interesting. Don't you? I sure as hell do. Because I feel pretty damn stupid talking redstone when that is so not my forte in this game. And I should... Turn it back on hard, because I always go on peaceful in my lab world, because as you guys saw, there was the spaceway up top and the spaceway down, and finding a safe way down is just so slow. You just... Whee! Anyway, let's hop in real quick. And head back over here to the mini station, which I'm thinking might need an actual name now, because it is kind of a mini station, but it's getting turned into quite the more impressive room than what it started out as. I mean, it's got 12 furnaces for one. <laughs> but why are we here? We are here to once again show you my very insignificant glowstone dust collection. And why am I doing that? Because I think the fun thing we need to do in this episode is go and stock up. So. Let me head on down to the cave base, get supplied up, ready to go, and I will meet you guys in the nether at our nether base.